Hi guys, this is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to Substance Painter. What we're going to go over is just a very basic quick start for a person that's completely new to Substance Painter. I'm going to go over just the ability to bring in a mesh into Substance Painter. We're going to go over a little bit of the interface and we're going to get right in to start painting and showing you how the brushes work show you the alphas, show you the materials. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the layers. I'll talk about viewer settings and I'll talk uh, uh, briefly about texture sets. Um, basically, this is just to get you started in Substance Painter, getting you up and running. And for future tutorials, I'll get into a lot more in depth of each and every component of Substance Painter. So let's get started going over Substance Painter and kind of having giving you a quick start to this program. So what is Substance Painter? Basically, it's a texture and painting program that works using uh, PBR, which is physically based render. And what that means is really basically it creates a very realistic 3D texturing on your model. Uh, now, Let's go over just the, a basic overview of the program. Now you'll see that there really isn't anything to work with. We have to add in a mesh into the program. So in, in order to do that, what we'll do is we'll go to File, New, and we'll get a dialog box. And we'll have a mesh, right currently it says no mesh selected, and we'll have to select the mesh. So if you go into your project folder, we have a container.obj. And now it's a good point to tell you that in order to bring in a mesh, you have to have a UV map on the on your geometry. Substance Painter does not create the UV, so you'll have to do that in another program such as Cinema 4D or Maya or some other uh, third party program. Uh, UV layout is one that I've used before and it, it's, it's a very good program for making uh, for making UVs for your your models. And we have a few different options down here. We're going to keep these default since this is pretty much a quick start uh, tutorial. But we do have uh, some options in order to bring in maps, your normal maps. Um, and you can also do that later after you create this uh, new project. So this isn't uh, necessary at this moment, but I will be going over all these options in uh, next t uh, tutorials. So we're just gonna click OK, and this will load in this little little container that I made. It's pretty basic just to in order to do some painting on it. Now for the controls, that you have for moving around the object. Option, click outside of your model, will rotate around. And Option, Command, will um, move the camera back and forth, move the object back and forth. And your scroll wheel will be also for zoom. So you can see that. And we also, if you hold down Alt, you have all the commands for your uh, for moving around in the uh, view space that we have here. And just in case if you have a middle mouse button, I'm using an Apple Magic Mouse. So I don't have a middle mouse, but if you do, you can use these options as well. So at the top here, we have uh, our toolbar. And we have various things that you probably have recognized in other programs of uh, Photoshop or, or another 3D program. We have our brush tool. We have a race. We also have uh, things like symmetry. And we also have various options for looking at our model in a 2D view and our 3D view. And we also have our um, 
we could look at it just as a 2D view if you a little bit more comfortable painting in that um, environment. And then we can also um, we can also look at it in our regular just a 3D view only. So we have a few different options up here. We also have our our shelf down here at the bottom, which is our alphas. Now alpha, a good way to think of an alpha is sort of a, an opening in a piece of paper. And if you're spraying paint through that opening, um, that's the the shape that you will get through the uh, onto your object. So we have um, uh, think of it as like an opening where paint is getting pushed through. Uh, we also have uh, various materials. We have grunges, uh, procedural materials, textures. Um, so we have a few different options here that you can use in order to paint up onto your 3D model. Uh, we have various brushes and uh, different ways that we can set up. You can see there's some pretty interesting things here. And you can also, of course, create and load in your own brushes. Uh, we also have a particle system, which is uh, pretty basic, but it's, it's definitely pretty interesting to use. And we have uh, various materials that you can apply onto your model as well. Now, moving up here, we also have our layers. And again, if you're if you if you're familiar with say something like Photoshop, this might be pretty uh, familiar to you. You might be able to use this pretty easily. Um, the only difference is that we also have this drop down, and I'll get into this a little bit more. But we have a way to just work on a specific uh, section of our material such as the metallic part, which is brightness. If, say, if you want to have the metallic shiny area, we can drop that opacity down, but it won't affect, say, color or um, other, these other options like roughness and normal and height. So I just want to make you aware of that as well. And of course, if you have it at the top level base, you can just uh, change the opacity for, uh, for the entire layer. And you also have this little icon here. If you click on that, you can just set the value uh, numerically. And you'll see that in various other options throughout Substance Painter. Uh, you'll be able to add in things uh, numerically. And of course, you also have uh, these layer styles um, that you can do like say overlay or mul multiply uh, similar to what we have in Photoshop. Um, and we have uh, various other options. You can make a fill layer. You can uh, make new layers. Uh, you can delete. You can make groups, little folders as well. So very similar to what we have in Photoshop. Now we have down here is a texture set settings. These are a lot of the areas that you're going to be using to bring in normal maps and, and various maps and baking out maps. And we also have the really the area you're probably going to work in the most in terms of how you want your paint or texturing to be applied onto your onto your model. So what we have here is we have our brush, and this will be our brush size. And you can see that in our uh, preview window over here. And if I go to our, our model, and I can start painting, you can see the brush size and how it applies that paint. And I'll get into uh, color and, and different alphas as well. And we have our flow. and see how that is applied. And like I said before, you have the option to add in these um, add in these size differences numerically. 
And you also have an option for if you're using a Wacom tablet. I, I have a Wacom tablet, but currently I'm just using a mouse. But we can add in pen pressure or take off the pen pressure. And you have stroke opacity and spacing. You can see that in a preview window and I can show that how I how that looks. And you have the different angles of which to uh, add this in. And you also have jitter, uh, something you probably have seen before if you uh, looked at my body paint 3D uh, tutorial for for Cinema 4D. Also has a similar function here. And uh, this is a, a little bit more uh, advanced. As you can tell, we have various different ways you can add in the jitter and applying your paint in, a, in this fashion. And now down here we have our alpha. If you click on that, you can load in your alpha. And I'm uh, just going to try something. How about uh, this Dirt 04? And you can see how that applies. Let's uh, maybe bring this jitter down. You can adjust the spacing as well. Uh, now, let me uh, move down here a little bit more. And you can see how we have uh, different options for the hardness and the shape. And now down here, we also have our color. So if I click on that, we can choose our color. Try this green. Hopefully it won't look too ugly on your uh, on your screen. Um, so we have various different colors that we can work with, obviously. And we can also uh, affect the uh, metallic if we bring up the metallic from a darker color to the lighter white you can see that this will make let me choose a different alpha so um, And also, if you go to alphas, you can just simply double click and that will give you your, your alpha as well. So just kind of applying this and we can bring that and you can see that preview window here and how that applies. Now, this is a good opportunity to talk about the lighting that we have in Substance Painter. Uh, the type of lighting is image-based lighting, and you can view that if you go to Viewer Settings. You have this option, Environment Opacity. If you bring that all the way up, you can see the image in the background. And if we bring the blur down, you can see the type of image that we have. And I uh, just want to keep you, uh, make you aware of that we can change the image and it is something that you can have uh, with the opacity down. I tend to like to keep the opacity down and just focus on the uh, materials that I'm putting onto the model. And now we also have roughness. If we bring this up, you can see that how that affects the material as well. Let me undo that for a second. And you can see how that is uh, different, currently different than our material that we painted on before. 
and uh, we have our normal uh, normal color and we also have height information that we can uh, apply as well and we can bring this back up so you can see that we have a few different options here that we can change on the fly and various different uh, abilities to uh, change different levels of our materials as we go and as we paint using different alphas, uh, metallic. And uh, we also have just one other thing that I want to talk about is our texture set. Currently, I just wanted to bring in just an, a demo, uh, just an object, a very simple object that we can work with and start painting on. But um, you also, if you have various different other parts to this, uh, say a handle and a grip and a, and a cover, these would be in this position here and you would be able to solo those out and uh, change the various settings just as you would um, that we did here with the layers. So each one would have its own layer group. So as you can see this very quick, uh, quick start tutorial um, and how useful this program can be once you model something out in your own 3D program, whether it be Cinema 4D or Maya, um, or if you sculpt something in ZBrush or Mudbox, and then have the UVs uh, create those and bring that into Substance Painter to create some really beautiful and really um, uh, very interesting and realistic textures. Now this can be used in a game environment, but it can also be used in uh, CG for visual effects, uh, the resolution is, is you can go up to 8K, so it's a very uh, powerful program which to work with. And I'm very excited to uh, introduce this program and start working on it. And I'm going to have uh, more tutorials where I'm going to talk about each and every part of this, of uh, the interface, and start getting involved and really start texturing something a little bit more interesting than a uh, this little metal uh, container. I put a link in the description to download project files. You can also go to astronomic3d.com to download project files from this tutorial and all the tutorials that I've made so far. Thanks for watching.